What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. And I've, I've got who I think is one of the best Giants video makers on the platform. I've uh, been wanting to work with Mike for a while. Mike, too nice. If you guys haven't done so, link will be in the pinned comment below. Go over there, check him out. Um, we're going to be doing this weekly. Next week, we'll be on his channel. We'll start doing it live probably next week. But, uh, Mike, man, I just want to say thank you for coming on the channel, and uh, let's talk some Giants football. Yeah, thanks for having me. It should be fun. Hopefully, we do this weekly. Obviously, I respect you very much as well, so I think hopefully people will enjoy this, and um, I'm excited to talk about the Giants. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. Giants, of course, yeah. had a lot of changes this offseason um, in terms of the coaching staff. Everybody's brand new for the most part outside of a couple of positional coaches. And uh, week one opponent, you know, I knew going in, this is a very experienced team. You, you got Mike Tomlin, who's been coaching the league for a very long time. Pittsburgh's got a really good defense. Overall, you know, give me your thoughts on the game. We'll start on the offensive side of the football. G give me some of your thoughts on the offensive side of the football. How do you think the New York Giants did? Did they meet your expectations? Did they do worse than you anticipated? Yeah, the important parts, of course, were Andrew Thomas and Daniel Jones. I think those guys did pretty well, honestly. I mean, Andrew Thomas, I thought, was fine. Um, of course, maybe a couple of iffy things here and there. But for the most part, very good uh, debut for him. Daniel Jones, you can tell there's a difference there. The pocket presence is different. There were a couple plays where he was sacked where I said to myself, you know what, if that was last year, that's probably a fumble. You can tell he's doing a better job. He had that one play on like third and four. He scrambled for a first down to the left. Now, obviously, everyone wants to hang their hat on that terrible throw he had and he shouldn't have done it he knows it um that can't happen in the future but you got to live with it I mean look this guy's still very young he hasn't played a full 16 games yet basically and I think as his career goes on he'll know you can't do those things I think obviously if he can go back he would have thrown that ball away so look at Daniel Jones he was fine honestly had a lot of accurate passes um I expected a lot of short passes in this offense they definitely did that they had the long pass to Slayton which was very well set up I love that play that angle going underneath and then Fitzpatrick came up on him had Slayton and one-on-one, -on -one, very easy touchdown there. Great throw by him. Um, for the rest of the offense, I mean, Engram was awful. We'll, we'll get into that, I'm sure. The wrong game was, uh, you know, man, I, I feel bad for Barkley, honestly. I mean, the guy is such an incredible talent, and then he's basically just running into brick walls every time. So they have to figure that out. Uh, I'm sure Jason Garrett will find a way. He's had a good running history in his career, so I'm sure they'll get better in the run game as things go on. Yeah, uh, I think you hit most of it right on the head, what I was going to say. But as far as the uh, offense goes for me, I completely agree with you with Daniel Jones. I couldn't believe – some, and, and don't get me wrong. I'm watching the game. I'm live streaming the game live. I'm a fan like everybody else. I was upset when he threw the pick. It's a bad pick. He had an 18-play drive. Maybe the best drive I've seen the Giants have. In, I, I don't know. How long has it been since they had a drive like that? It's at least five years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that drive, obviously, obviously it ended poorly with that play, but mm – -hmm. To me, outside of that one throw, and you can't take that away, but Dan, I, I don't think I've been more impressed with Dan Jones since he's been in the league than this game. When you factor everything in, the defense yeah. you're going up against, they created the most turnovers last year. They had the most sacks. They're the best defense in football, in my opinion. They had, all, they had months to prepare for the Giants. They've got a veteran head coach going up against the guy who's never coached in the NFL. You have two new systems. You had no preseason. And they couldn't run the ball, like you said. They had seven yards on the ground outside of Daniel Jones, who was the team's leading rusher, uh, with 22 with the scrambling on that drive. And Jones was making play after play after play off his back foot. The throw to Slayton was beautiful on the play-action yeah. pass. And obviously makes one really bad mistake. The other interception I kind of chalk up to Watt made an mm -hmm. unbelievable play. And I'm not a guy who's a Daniel Jones cheerleader. Actually, at times I feel like I've been critical of Daniel Jones. But I didn't understand the backlash he got for this game. When you factor in, they couldn't run the ball against that defense. Dan Jones kept us in this football game. To me, he proved that he took a huge step for me on, on Monday night. He really did, in my opinion. As far as the offensive line goes, the pass blocking, I thought was decent. It, it, it was yeah. better than I thought it was going to be when they couldn't run the ball. I mean, he had seven yards rushing. They knew you had to throw. He still only gave up three sacks, 13 out of 54 sacks last year. So that's better than their weekly average. And I thought they did decent there. The, the pass protection for Barkley wasn't good. Evan Ingram was beyond bad. Uh, the tight ends blocking was horrible. Andrew Thomas, like you said, was a guy we all had our eye on. Uh, the rookie left tackle did as good of, a job, good of a job as you could hope for for a rookie. Going up against the defense like that. Problem is outside of him, Cam Fleming sucks. Uh, <laughs> Nick, Nick Gates' first start, I'll give him a mulligan, didn't look good. And, and the guards did not perform well either. They all had a PFF grade of like 53 or worse outside of Thomas. Um, and I think some of that may have to do with the fact that Gates was at center. Maybe that hurts Hernandez a bit. Maybe that hurts Zeitler a bit. 
But the offensive line as a whole, the run blocking specifically, was probably the worst I've ever seen. It was, it was that bad. Every time Barkley touched the ball, it was it, 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 three yards in the backfield. He, he couldn't even get a running start. So but I, I don't even care about holes. It's what I said today in my video. Just to let him get a running start. You can, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and, that, and that's what they got to work on this week. But the, uh, the running game was massively disappointing this week. But I was encouraged to see that Daniel Jones was able to um, overcome that against a great defense um, with no running game. He was able to still play pretty well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I didn't know what to expect, honestly, from Jones. I mean, as we said, outside of the couple bad decisions and the TJ Watt one, I, I really can't say it's his fault. I mean, I feel like most quarterbacks in the league would be fooled by that. Guy's just a great player, probably should have won Defensive Player of the Year last year. Um, you know, you got to chalk it up to a great play by him right there. But uh, I, I think in terms of the running game, it has to get better. I, I don't see a way they can win games like this and, and losing their turnover battle the way they did. It needs to get better. And look, I want Barkley to succeed. I know people probably think I don't based on me not liking the pick and, and the time for a running back. But like, I really want this guy to do well because if Barkley does play well, it's going to make Daniel, jo Daniel Jones' job easier. That was the whole argument when we took uh, Barkley because it would make Eli Manning's job easier. You set up the pass or set up the run and then you set up the pass. So I think if Barkley gets things going and teams have to respect the run, then and it's going to make Jones' job a lot easier. And I'm sure halfway through that game, the Steelers are probably laughing in the locker room saying like, oh, they, they can't run the ball on us. And, and you know what I mean? So it's probably so easy for them. But if Barkley really gets things going, and hopefully this week he does, I know it's not an easy defense once again this upcoming week. But if they do, I think we'll see an even better Daniel Jones. And that's great news for us, of course. Yeah, uh, great points again. Yeah, as far as this week goes, I'm a little encouraged to see the way that the Lions were able to run on the Bears. Uh, Peterson had yeah. almost 100 yards average, I think over five yards of carry. And obviously we know – but at the end of the day, if they block the way they did this week, it's not going to matter. And you know as well as I do, they're going to have the same philosophy after watching the film. They're going to stack the box just like most teams are going to do, and they're going to force Daniel Jones to beat them. The other guy I didn't touch on, Slayton. Darius Slayton um, – and, and I'm not going to go as far to say that he is Odell Beckham level. I'm not going to go as far to say that he's a, a supremely talented number one yet. But I think Darius Slayton has asserted himself as being a legitimate uh, – high-end wide receiver in this in this league he's not just a he's the Giants right number one he's definitely the Giants one yeah. and I, I kind of think a tumor with him if he could remain healthy he kind of reminds me of that type of receiver I don't think he's ever going to be top five but I think he's always going to be a very good receiver for this football team I think he's starting to show you he's not just a deep threat he he has he's he's doing everything he's making catches over the middle he played excellent in that game uh going up against a team like that they surrendered 176 yards through the air on average over the last 14 games last year after they got Minka Fitzpatrick. He alone had 102. They only surrendered yeah. 17, punch, uh, 17 passing touchdowns over the last 14 games. He alone caught two. Darius Slayton was phenomenal on Monday night. Definitely. I mean, look, I mean, the knock on him coming out of college was like the route running and the hands, but like we we're seeing a much improved player here. I mean, I'm sure there's a reason he fell to what the fifth round, but like we are seeing a much improved player here. I think you're right. I think the, I think you said a mind tumor, right? He, that was a great comparison. I, I like that a lot. I've always said, I don't think we will ever see Slayton be a top 10 wide receiver in this league. I know people say, we talked about Allen Robinson on Twitter yesterday. People were saying, oh, Slayton's better than Allen Robinson. I, I would not say that yet. I hope so. But this guy can be a very consistent and really good high-end number two option for the Giants for a long time. I still would like them to get an alpha wide receiver one at some point. Hopefully, maybe that, um, one of the upcoming drafts. But the Giants have a keeper for sure. I mean, coming into the year, I was a bit, you know, I wasn't really sure if he was the real thing. But I think we saw, especially what you just said, against this defense allowing 170-something passing uh, yards per game. This guy has like 100 Something. So, like, it shows you right there. He's legit. And him and Jones definitely have a great connection. So, I think as long as those two stay healthy, I'm sure for years on out, uh, Slate won't put up some good numbers. Yeah, I'm very impressed with him. And uh, now we got to talk a little bad. Let's go back to the offensive <laughs> line. Um, and obviously, coming in, you know, I tried to temper my expectations, being that you got three new guys on the offensive line. You got a rookie left tackle. You got Fleming, who sucks. And you got, uh, and you got Gates at the center spot. So, that's 60% of your offensive line. So I tried to temper my expectations going up against the team that they are. We all know how bad they played. I mean, as bad as it gets. My question to you is, when do you think they start to make a move and start if this doesn't correct itself soon? And obviously, hopefully it does this week. But if we start to see similar things this week, what do you think they do? Do you think we see Parrott in there sooner than later? Do you think they ship Gates over to the, the right tackle? Maybe they put Pulley at the center. What do you think they do um, if this doesn't correct itself, say, by the end of next week? 
Yeah, I, I went over this in my reaction video. I said, like, I really didn't expect Matt Parrott to see the field until, like, maybe week 12, 13-ish. But, like, at this point, if Fleming is playing at that level, which is just not good enough, as we both know, we all know that, um, I think maybe just a few more weeks, honestly. Like, I, I don't know how long of a leash this guy can have. I mean, Cam Fleming is not a guy under a big contract, as we all know. Parrott is the future. It really just depends how ready he is. I mean, we don't know what he looks like in practice day by day. We see some practice clips where he looks great, and we're all like, oh, I'll just put him in there. But we, we don't know the struggles he's going through. So, like, it's going to be interesting. I trust the coaching staff at this point, as, as especially compared to the last one, uh, to know if he's ready or not. But there's some interesting options. I've seen, like, you know, you should put Gates at right tackle and then put Poli at center. I've seen that idea thrown out there. And, of course, just flat out replace Parrott with Fleming. So, I, I don't know which way they're going to go about it. I'm sure if things don't change and the offensive line is still terrible, they're going to do something about it. This is not the old regime where they're going to keep trotting out Eric Flowers at left tackle every week and, and have him just be terrible. They're going to make a switch here. Now they have some offensive line depth, which they haven't had for a while. So now that they have that luxury, I'm sure it, it can't hurt to change things up. If Daniel Jones getting sacked four or five times a week, you have to make changes eventually. Now they play the Bears and I think the Niners coming up. A very tough defensive lines, as we know. So they might wait until after that and then find a way to get them in there. I, I don't know what's after that. Maybe the Rams and Cowboys game. Yeah, Rams ain't going to be much easier. I mean, you got yeah, a great exactly. interior defensive lineman with Donald uh, against, yeah. against Gates. But, yeah, I'm with you. I don't think they can wait that long because this is a year where we really have to find out what we got with Daniel Jones, find out what we got with Saquon Barkley, if we could start to establish this run. And you can't really fairly evaluate Daniel Jones until such time that you give him at least decent protection. And I recognize the pass protection was okay. But if you can't run the football – you're not, you're not going to get a good evaluation because then you, you could always say, well, they couldn't run the football. What did you expect from Danny Jones? So they really have to get this thing fixed to at least adequate offensive line play. But I think it's going to be a lot like 2018 where the first six, seven weeks, the offensive line sucked. And then the last, like, eight weeks, they started to come together. You saw Nate Solder play much better. They bring in Jamon Brown. And, and the offensive line really came together those last eight weeks. You saw them play much better. That's what I expect this year. I, I really thought they would struggle when you look at the schedule and the fact that it was a shortened – uh, pre, pre There were no preseason games, short and offseason. Um, I really thought the first half of the year, maybe hopefully, optimistically speaking, the first four or five games, but it could extend maybe the first seven or eight games. I think they'll struggle, especially on the offensive line. I think the second half is when we're going to really truly get a fair evaluation of this football team. Yeah, that's always what I thought, too. It's not really a surprise. I mean, to expect everything to go right here. And I think we've only kept, like, two coaches from the last regime and, like, all these new players. You said 60% of the offensive line is new it's you can't expect it to just work right away and I mean even a guy like Will Hernandez who we didn't talk about needs to get better I mean like we're still waiting and waiting for him to take that next step we thought it was happening last year I didn't see much this year now the I don't think the all 22s came out yet so I haven't really got to watch the offensive line closely but at least watching that game live we didn't see any run blocks from Will Hernandez or even like pass blocks that were like oh that was great you know it's like we're still waiting for Will Hernandez to get there but but, I mean hopefully he does at some point but yeah I mean even Eli Manning back in the second half of 2018 looked a lot better I don't know if it was the offensive line I don't know if it was getting more used to the offense probably a combination of both but if Eli Manning can get better then I'm sure Daniel Jones can do the same thing so that's an optimistic outlook about it. Yeah, the other thing I want to tell you, guys, I guess the film didn't come out like you said. I know you do a lot of film breakdowns. Um, I wanted to ask you what you thought about Jason Garrett's play calling, but even the thing that really stuck out to me, it looked like they were – I don't know what they were doing with the offensive line. A lot of times it looked like they were asking Gates to come back and block Dupree. What did you think of that? Did you think they got a little too cute with the blocking schemes and things like that? And, and what did you think of the overall play calling from Jason Garrett? Yeah, I'm sure they had a purpose for it. I'm not sure exactly why they tried to do that with Gates, but like I, there were some points where it kind of annoyed me. Like there were points in this game where there were eight, nine men in the box. And like they basically, I think Bobby Skinner made a video about this actually. He did. Like, they I had, watched it on Twitter. It was they, great. You know, the seven versus eight and like, you know, basically saying you had to block perfectly for this run play to work. And like they still tried to run the ball through a brick wall and it's not going to happen. Like I, I know you have to establish a run in today's NFL. And I know a lot of times, even on first down, they tried to run on the ball a lot which is great but after a while it's like how much more can we do here you know so there were different schemes and form uh, formations a lot of three tight end sets which we have not seen too much uh Levine Toilolo got involved on a couple plays in there so like that was good to see it's not the same stuff over and over again like we know McAdoo and Shermer's offense three wide receivers basically all the time so I was happy to see some different formations and things like that but like some of the play calling I just feel like when the 
box was that stacked, you cannot force the run. Like if they're if the defense is telling you like we're going all out to stop the run here, then it's probably a good idea to say, all right, let's audible out of a pass play here. I don't know how much of that is on Jones, how much of that is on Garrett, but someone has to make an adjustment here because as I said, it just makes no sense to run into a brick wall over and over again. Great point. And sometimes you got to throw to set up the run. Obviously the old adage is you got to run to set up the pass, but when they're putting eight, nine guys in the box, like you said, you got to get the defense to back off a bit. Um, the other thing, the, the one point of the game where I, I hated Garrett's play call, this is just me, maybe you think differently, the Giants recover the punt, uh, the, the, the fumble on the, on the one-yard line or the one-and-a-half or two, whatever. They come out of the shotgun, and, and he's got Saquon to his right. Me, first off, there wasn't enough eye formation for me in this game in terms of when they, when they ran the ball. I, I thought we'd see more of that. I thought we'd see the fullback involved more. I didn't like that. I, ex- I expect to see more. But when you're on the goal line, I want to see, I want to see a, a, a typical eye form, at least for the first play, give your offensive line a chance to get a push and see if you can get it in when you're that close. Yeah, I don't remember seeing Eli Penny too much. I mean, I think there was maybe a few plays, but like for the most part, I, I think you're right, especially like when you're on that goal line, why not try it? You know, like it just even take one play to say, all right, Barkley, take the ball, follow your blocker and see if you can find the hole here. It, it can't hurt. Now, I will say on that first drive after the, the muff punt, I think that third down call by Garrett was a really good one. I think it was either Ingram or Jones. I'm honestly not sure which person's fault it was. I haven't looked at the replay. But that play where I think Jones rolled out to his right, I think mm-hmm. Barkley was going towards the corner, that should have been completed for a touchdown. I, I don't know if Engram was supposed to stop running or sh- uh, should have kept going. I don't know if Jones should have put more loft on that ball. That should have been a touchdown right there. So the Giants just left four points off the board right there, which sucked. And I give Jason Garrett credit because that was a good play call. Just the players didn't execute right there. Yeah, and, and the other thing was, I, I think it was more on Ingram than Jones on that play. But like you said, who know, you know, we don't know for yeah. sure. But um, – I, when I looked at it from the vantage point, a lot of people said Jones threw it wide. I saw Watt right in front of him, so it was almost like Jones had to throw it wide of Watt. But it, maybe if he puts more loft on it, Ingram comes up with it. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's, that's exactly. a good point you bring up there. Um, and, yeah, that, that to me and, – and, again, I'm trying to be optimistic when I'm watching the game, streaming the game. Once they didn't score a touchdown there, I was like, the game's over. In my head, I'm like, yeah. you can't leave four points on the board against a defense like that. But now I want to get to the defensive side of the football. To the defense's credit. As soon as that happened, I said to myself, we're screwed. The Steelers are going to get all this momentum. They get a three and out. Next drive, they played really well to start that game. And granted, DeCastro was out, so I knew they'd probably have a better opportunity to get pressure up the middle. That first half, first quarter and a half maybe, they had constant pressure up the middle. Leonard Williams played great. Um, I thought Lorenzo Carter had pretty good pressure off the edge. Uh, Dexter Lawrence was a beast, especially in the second half with the play on the screen pass when he readjusted himself. A 342-pound man is not supposed to be able to do that. Um, I thought the defensive line played phenomenal um, pretty much throughout the game. I I was actually very encouraged with the pressure they got up front. In terms of the edge rushers outside of Carter, you didn't really see much. Simenez was invisible. Um, Fackrell looked like he got lost in coverage. Blake Martinez. Everybody was bashing the Blake Martinez signing. He played damn good in that game. I thought he had really good instincts against the run. I was impressed with him. Bradbury got lost a little bit here and there, but overall I thought he played a really good game, made a great play uh, the first drive in the second half when he batted the ball down on that third and long. But, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, overall I was actually pretty encouraged with the defense outside of the last drive of the first half where they gave up a touchdown. Yeah, I don't know how much of that was Roethlisberger and his rust. He definitely missed some easy throws. I mean, he was throwing high to the tight ends two yards away, and even the swing pass to the running backs, he was off on those throws as well. But you have to give the Giants defense some credit. I, I like what Patrick Graham did early on. I mean, they sent like Darnie Holmes on a blitz on the first drive. That worked. He got there in time. He didn't sack him, but he definitely disrupted that play. A lot of plays were um, about to say, I always, always want to say Sam Beal. It's Uh, Logan Ryan was sent on a blitz. I always want to say Sam Beal, but Logan Ryan uh, was sent on a blitz as well a couple times, I think. So I I like the different type of pressures they're bringing. And I'm pretty sure based on what we heard in like the, uh, the practice reports and things like that, I know they're not allowed to share much, but apparently he, uh, Patrick Graham really wanted to have a lot of different blitz schemes and packages. And you can definitely see that now. It's it's not just your typical let's rush four people and stuff. It's like, we're going to send different looks at you every time. And it even confused Roethlisberger sometimes, which is great because he's seen, at all so if you can confuse him that's awesome now you brought up some guys that didn't play well I think Zimenez was very disappointing invisible didn't play as much as I thought he would but still invisible uh fact row missed a tackle I remember in there Corey Ballantyne I don't see him as a starting cornerback I I don't know why they're trying to flirt with this idea but it's not going to work in my opinion Jabril Peppers had a 
you know, I mean, he lit up that long pass to Ebron for 25, 30 yards. He took a terrible angle on the Benny Snell run. He has to be better. I mean, flat out. I mean, I'm tired of hearing every year Jabril Peppers has potential, potential. I, I just want to see it now. You got to stay healthy too. I mean, he, I think he cramped up at one point, but he should be all right. But I, I think for the most part, even James Bradbury, I think people, uh, someone on Twitter said he's not worth the money to me. And I'm like, dude, like what else did you expect? Like James Bradbury is not Jalen Ramsey. He's not a top five corner in this league. He's going to be fine though. Like he's better than what we've had for he's sure. A pro. He's a pro. Yeah, exactly. Like you can't expect too much. You know, you can't expect an interception every game and, and to be perfect. But as you said, and we, and we, we forgot to mention that fumble he had on, um, I think it was Snell where he came from out of balance to yeah. hit that ball. That was a great play. I mean, Juju Smith-Schuster just had a very great heads up play. The Giants, you know, should have had that ball, honestly, but you have to give him credit for that play as well. Of course, it, it's forgotten about because the Steelers recovered, but James Bradbury, I think, made a pretty big impact on this game. Great point on that. I completely forgot about that because we didn't recover yeah. it, and that would have been a momentum-shifting play had we been able to recover it, which it, looks like, it looked like we initially did, and then they kind yeah. of fought and got it back. The other thing that I really noticed throughout this game, and one of my subscribers brought it up to me in the post game, and when he said it, I said, you know what, you're right, because when you're watching the game, you don't really think about it. The Giants, you know, this whole offseason with Joe Judge and this coaching staff has been all about discipline. The Giants only committed four penalties, 25 yards against, one of which they intentionally took to back up for the punt. So it was yeah. really only three penalties for 20 yards the entire game, which is, I think, top three in the league for week one. That stood out to me. And, and you really noticed it on both the – they didn't have any holding penalties on – the tennis balls worked, Mike. <laughs> but the great uh, idea. but but um no I I thought they did a great job in that aspect they didn't beat themselves yeah that's a great point I honestly didn't even like pay it. I guess when you don't realize it then they did a pretty good job of not getting penalties because if we did realize it that means they were not doing well but yeah penalty wise I you know I do remember them taking that flag intentionally on the punt but really yeah outside of that it wasn't really that bad at all you didn't see any like late hits and stupid things like that I'm trying to think where, the, where uh, the offensive pass came. interference on Ingram is one of them yeah okay what do you think about that, by the way? I thought it was personally watching it live. I heard people say it was a terrible call, but what, what did you think? It seems like the league this year, and it wasn't just that game. You saw it in the Cowboys game. I saw it in a couple oh, yeah. of other games. Mm -hmm. It seems like the league this year is is really paying heavy focus on the offensive pass interference. I could see it. It's definitely It was definitely debatable, but I could see it. He pushed off a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think people are probably picking on Ingram a little bit because of how bad he was in every other area <laughs> of the game where he dropped balls, he missed blocks. It was a bad start for Ingram. I was all aboard the Ingram train this year. I thought he'd fit the scheme well. I'm not off of it yet. It's one game, but um, the, guy can't, the guy can't block. The guy can't yeah. block. And to that point, actually, I think the Bengals lost the game, too, off a uh, push-off by A.J. Green. They should have won that game. The refs call offense pass interference once again. So I, I guess you're right. They are really just keeping an eye on that this year. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and back to Ingram, I didn't want to fully buy in this year. That was me last year, honestly. I feel like I'm, I just learned a bit more from him. But, like, talent-wise, you know he has it. So when you see him not doing – even the same thing with Barkley, it's a whole different situation. But you know Barkley and Ingram are so damn talented. But to see them not being able to use that talent – is frustrating as fans because we know how you know great these guys are and how capable they are of doing these things like we've we've seen engram take uh, the ball 75 yards to the house before on a drag route and we've seen saquon barkley have countless big plays for touchdowns and when he's getting bottled up for 15 carries and six yards and evan engram's dropping these easy passes we say to ourselves like what, what the hell is this this is not what we expected so like it has to get better for sure yeah, and uh, the, the, I, I was as you were talking, I was thinking about, because uh, you're talking about Ingram, I was thinking again about Slayton. I wanted to see more play action in this game as well, and hopefully we get to see that this week. Of course, the play action, you couldn't get it done because you couldn't run, so you're not fooling yeah. the defense. Um, but hopefully they can establish the run this week, because I do think it could be a big play offense with shots down the field, but you're not going to be able to do that if you can't establish the run to get the defense to actually believe that you're running the football. So that, that was a major question mark for, uh, for me in this game as well. I thought they'd be t able to take more shots down the field. They really only took yeah. the one shot. Uh, for Maybe there was one other ball that they threw deep down the field. But outside of that, they didn't take a lot of shots down the field. Um, and the Steelers took away the run, which is exactly what I think the Chicago Bears are going to try to do this week. And what adjustments do you make this week if you're Joe Judge on, uh, on I, I, well, I guess Garrett on the offensive side and Graham on the defensive side? What adjustments do you make this week going up against the Chicago Bears? <sighs> I just want to sound crazy, but I'm coming out the ball, like passing the ball 10 straight times. I, I just want to see if it works. I mean, like I know the Bears are probably going to expect the Giants to come out and try to establish this run early. But Daniel Jones looked good last week. I mean, like, run a couple play actions early and, and try to get some big plays on it. If it don't work, it don't work. But I really think the way they should script this game is to be like, let's just pass the ball a bunch of times in a row. 
I think the Bears' front seven is better than their secondary. I, I would say that. So I would say, like, you might as well take advantage of a team's weakness. Let's try and pass on them. And if it works, it works. I mean, the Giants – yeah, it's a dumb term, but they were kind of running through the air, it seemed like. You know what I mean? Like they were having these short passes to Shepard, who was actually really good in that game. We forgot to mention him, but Shepard yeah. was good. Um, but, yeah, they can have these short passes to Barkley, of course, and even Ankerman if he decides to catch and Caden Smith. So, like, I think they can basically, quote, unquote, run through the air, and it could work. So, like, you don't always have to run the ball. It can be done through the short passes as well. Now, I, like, I do expect them to try and run the ball at some points in this game, but I really hope the first – few plays maybe four or five plays or so they actually try and come out and actually maybe take a couple of deep shots and try and beat this defense right away because the Giants are the type of team that you know you can't really fall behind I want them to get up early I want them to be able to play with a lead because once you fall behind and the, the Giants don't have the greatest offensive firepower you know once they fall behind sometimes it's, it's not a good thing but I think in a game like this I do want to see them pass the ball a bit more early than they'd probably want to. I agree I think you got to throw early on to try to set up the run which was kind of what I thought they should have done this week and I was actually I actually loved what they did coming out. You remember the first drive this week, first play, empty backfield, shotgun formation. Second play, uh, they th- they were throwing a lot on the first drive, yeah. and then and then they kind of reverted back to the run. Um, when, yeah, and the Steelers continued to stack the box. But I agree with you. I want to see them come out, try to chuck the ball in Chicago, try to stretch out that defense. The other thing that I noticed in this game that they didn't do that I thought they might do a little bit more of, they didn't do the RPOs at all with Daniel Jones. Yeah. Do you expect to see that a bit this week at all? I actually thought about that today. Like, I, I completely forgot that Daniel Jones can run. But, like, <laughs> you know, now that you think about it, I'm like, yeah, the Giants didn't really do any RPOs last week. And not to say it would have worked. I feel like the Steelers did a great job of, like, containing on defense on both sides. You know, so I don't think they were, like, cheating on any side. But um, I think this week it, – it depends what the tape says, honestly. Obviously, the, the Lions are not going to be running that. But if the um, – if they see on the tape that one of the outside linebackers is kind of like collapsing early, then they might tell Daniel Jones, like, Hey, you know, don't be afraid to keep one of these. And they might try to run some more, um, some more RPOs and, and things like that. And I think that plays to Daniel Jones's strength. So I, I, I don't see why not. I think it'll help the offense. We saw the read option last year in Tampa Bay that worked. I don't know why they stopped doing it so much. I mean, it did work at times last year, but now that you have a quarterback that can use his legs, I mean, like, why not use it? You know? Yeah, and I didn't see any play-action rollouts at all. I was expecting to see more of that. But, again, they couldn't establish the run. So, I'm hoping that they get that more involved in the, in the, in the game plan this week. And it's going to come down to Ingram making plays up the middle. It's going to come down to establish the ground game with Barkley. It's going to come down to the blocking. And yeah. if they could do that, I think they got a shot. Um, but I don't think it's – you know, at the beginning of the year – and, and uh, you know, I'm a fan, too. You're a fan, too. We cover the team, but we're fans of the team. And a lot of times when you root for a team, you fall into the trap of raising your expectations probably higher than they should be. And, and going into the year, you know, a lot of my subscribers just kind of penciled this in as a win. They penciled the, the football team in as a two wins. We can't pencil in anybody as a win. And I think we got to go into this year with realistic expectations and say to ourselves, yeah, we want to see improvement. Yeah, of course we want to win each and every week. But you also got to take into account the type of team we have. We're learning. We're young. We didn't have a normal offseason, and this team has to get progressively better. And some people may say you can't make excuses. There's no moral victories. Well, in a year like this, yes, there is. Yes, there is. If you're being a realistic football fan, I'm sorry. If you're a fan that, um, you know, expects them to make the playoffs, well, no, there's not. But I think most people with a level head going into the year realize that this team was a team that is still rebuilding and is still a year away before we're set to compete. So you have to go into each week with that. Enjoy the game. Hope to see improvement and hope that they compete. And that's, to me, what you got to ask for week in, week out from this Giants team this week, at least in the first half. Yeah, that, that's the reality of the situation. I mean, I, I think I said this in, like, that schedule video I did. But, like I said, like, the Giants are probably going to be favored in maybe three or four of these games. And, like, you know, Vegas knows more than us. So, like, to say that you're not going to win most of these games is not it, – it's not being, like, a bad fan or anything like that. We're just being realistic with ourselves here. I mean, this this first – these first five games or so are ridiculous, and this this Bears one might be the most winnable one. Now, I think I had them winning on the schedule, and, and I don't know if they're going to win this week. Honestly, I have no idea. So, hopefully, don't ask me whether I think we win or not. But, uh, honestly, I, I, I think we saw some good things. Now, there, there were fans, of course, on Twitter. I mean, me and you were both on Twitter. We see people, oh, this team is terrible. They suck. Here we go again. 
I didn't look at it like that. I mean, maybe I did back in like 2018, even last year, because like they were trying that whole win and rebuild type of stuff. But like now I thoroughly know that we were in a rebuild here. I know this is a new head coach and, and new offense coordinator, defense coordinator, a bunch of new coaches and a bunch of new players. And this team is so young. They're one of the um, top three youngest teams in the league. I, I don't expect them to come out and beat the Steelers. I'm sorry. But the way they competed in that game was actually pretty good. And if Daniel Jones finds a way to not – throw that bad interception and the Giants make it 1917, who knows what happens? I'm not saying they'd win the game, but it would have been a lot closer. So just to say you're all out on this team, I think is a kind of a bad way to look at it. I agree. I, I completely agree. And I think they have a, I think they have a decent shot to win this game. I'd probably call it a 50, yeah. 50 game. Um, it's going to come down to establishing the offensive line with the ground game. And then you don't know, you know, I always say it, you gotta have a little bit of hope when it comes to football, any given Sunday, anybody could win. You catch some lucky bounces, you catch a team on the right week. You don't know. Um, but we have a young coach. We have a young team. We got to give this guy a chance. You know, I'm already starting to see people trick, and I'm sure you see it too. I'm already starting to see people trick on my comments. Uh, do you think we could get rid of Judge after a year? Do you think he'd be gone after two years? Like, I give the guy a that. chance, man. Uh. Yeah, I, no, I haven't seen many, but I've seen one here and there. We got to give this guy a chance. We got to give this guy a real chance. The last two coaches have only been here for two years. And I recognize, listen, I, I like him. I like, and I know you don't. Um, and I, I like some of the things he does. I don't like some of the things he does. I stick up for him because I think overall I like his mentality, and I think he's starting to build his team for the right way. But I recognize Gettleman's probably gone after this year, uh, unless the Giants exceed expectations and they win seven, eight games. When it comes eight games, maybe seven. But when it comes to what ownership came out and said, I don't expect them to be back. I just hope that they bring somebody from within. I don't want somebody to blow up this roster. But when it comes to Joe Judge. You got to have patience here. We can't keep flipping coaches every two years. You've got to come in with the right mentality and hope that this team builds each and every week. Yeah, I think me and you agree with that. I think when we talked back on the other channel, I, I think we said Joe Judge should be here for at least four years. Like, you cannot do any more of this, like, two years and you're done type of stuff. Like, I, I've seen enough of it. Like, there's no stability here. Um, it needs to happen. So, I think with Gettleman as well, I mean, I, I think you're right. It's kind of – it's looking like if this team has a five- or six-win year – then John Mayer might just say, all right, enough's enough, because we know he doesn't have a lot of patience. Now, people probably think I'm going to throw a party if, if Gettleman's fired, but it really depends who they hire. Like, as I always say, if they fire Gettleman, but bring in somebody that's like him, and obviously I'm not really the biggest fan of him, then there's no point in celebrating. So, like, I, it really depends who takes over it's this worse, team. It's worse, in my it opinion. Is. Yeah, yeah, Because sure. then you're bringing in somebody who's going to blow it up and, and want to do it yeah. his way. You know what I'm saying? So And there's, al there's always, like, I don't know if he's too young, but there's always that idea you can throw it around. Maybe Joe Judge gets roster control, and I'm sure he has some control now. I mean, we, we speculated it. I mean, I'm sure Gettleman did not want to cut Ryan Conley, but that's that's a whole different story. You know what yeah. I mean? So, um, yeah, I, look, if I had to guess, I think you're right. I think this is probably his last year. If the Giants exceed expectations and win seven, eight games and look good doing it, then maybe they do bring him back. But we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah. It's just speculating at this point, And I'm hoping they win eight games. And I hope they bring – I want him back because I, I, I want one more year of the rebuild. I think they need one more year uh, to continue to build this roster. I thought that him and Judge had a really good offseason, regardless of whether you hate Gettleman or not, um, who's ever watching, not just you specifically. I thought that they, they had a good offseason, and, and, and I'd like to see it for one more year, but there's no guarantees, and I completely get I Listen, I keep saying it. I think they brought Gettleman back to take the heat off Joe Judge. That, that's the real reason why I think they brought Gettleman back. Um, there is a, uh, there's a tweet in my drafts saying that exact thing, and I was too much of a you-know-what to send it out. I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to take the heat for it, but you're right. I, I I, and I'm a Gettleman guy. I, I'm a yeah, Gettleman yeah, guy, yeah. and I would have been okay with the Giants uh, getting rid of Gettleman just because it would have been a fresh start. New coach, mm -hmm. new GM. To me, it just made sense for the timeline. And when they didn't do it, I said to myself, well, why didn't they do this? They had every excuse to get rid of Gettleman. 70% of the fan base hates the guy. Well, why didn't they do it? And, and, and my thought process was this, was that. It was that if Joe Judge comes in here, nobody's going to – their Brenham's not going to uh, go to Joe Judge. It's going to go to Dave Gettleman. And I think he's going to be yeah. a scapegoat this year if this team performs poorly. That doesn't make it right, but I, I think that's a good point. I probably think that's why it happened. Yeah. I don't know, but Mike, man, I had an absolute blast doing doing this with you this week, and uh, next week it'll be more fun because we'll get to talk to the chat. We'll recap the game. We'll talk about next week's game. Chicago, it'll be tough, but it's a young team. We had a lot to build up of, like you said, I think there were a lot more positives than people gave them credit for um, off of week one. Hopefully Daniel Jones continues to build because ultimately that's what this season is about, man. It's about the growth of Daniel Jones. He is by far, and Joe Judge, of course, those are by far the two most important pieces of this team for this year and going forward. We need to see Daniel Jones take that step up in year two, 
And I think we got a good, a good preview week one. And I think it'll get even better as the season goes along. But Mike, man, give me your final thoughts. And thanks for coming on. Definitely. Thank you. Um, are we doing score predictions or no? Let's do it. Give me, give me, give me, give me a score prediction. Give me a score prediction. Well, I think someone wins this game 24, 20. For some reason that score is stuck in my head. I don't know which team wins it. Of course, hopefully the Giants do it. I will say 24-20 Giants. I, I don't have any fuel for it. I just did my pick video. So if you guys watched this before my weekly picks, Giants are getting six and a half, I think it was, or five and a half. I I can't. Mine was five and a half, yeah. Maybe it was five and a half. I got the Giants, and call me a homer, I don't care. I got the Giants winning 21-20. Giants by nice. one point. I think it'll be a close game. I do think that they get back to running the football and they at least do an adequate job. Um, and I think Daniel Jones continues to build off of what he did week one. I think that I, I think what Trubisky did in that uh, opening week, a little fluky to me. I know I know he had a yeah. great fourth quarter. I'm not buying into the Mitch train. I think he reverts back to his old self. Um, and I think the Giants create some turnovers like we've done. I, I don't remember if we did it much last year. The year before we did it, but Trubisky wasn't playing. But yeah, yeah. I, I think the Giants will create some turnovers on defense. This, uh, I know really Julian didn't. Love got his uh, first interception in that game. So there's there's one turnover that comes there to mind. Go. But I, I don't call. know about the rest of them. Yeah. Good call. But yeah, I think it's a very close game, man. But I, I do think that the Giants find a way to to get to one one before we play the 49ers and then go I'm to I'm confident they, they cover that five and a half, though, in a I am too. standpoint. I am, too. Yeah. I, I, I think they'll lose by four or less if they lose. Yeah. By four, mm-hmm. by four or less. I, I think it'll be you. a close game. Yeah, I yeah. agree with that. So there you go. All right. There's our picks. <laughs> Mike's man, Mike, man, thank you so much for coming on. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing it again next week. Uh, no problem. Talk to you next week. All right, guys.